Everybody's got their favorite program, and for me, that's the Gemini program, which I like to think of as NASA's overlooked middle child. It's what we're looking at today in Very Brief on Vintage Space. When we think of historic spaceflight programs, we tend to either think of the Mercury program or the Apollo program. The Mercury program, of course, being the first to actually send men into orbit, and the Apollo program, of course, culminating in the manned landings on the surface of the moon. But in between those two programs, the overlooked middle child was the Gemini program. The Gemini program was essentially designed as a bridge between Mercury and Apollo, and you can almost think of it as being sort of a bridge on the way to the moon. It was the program designed to teach NASA exactly what it would need to do to make the Apollo program a success. The Gemini program began life as Mercury Mark II, which I've talked about in this video. It was essentially designed to take the Mercury spacecraft, make it a little bit bigger, and stick a second guy in there to extend the lessons learned from the first spaceflight program. The principal goals remain to send two men into space for up to 14 days, which was roughly the time it would take to go to the moon, to perform a spacewalk, or properly an EVA, or extravehicular activity, so that men could actually walk around on the moon, and also to rendezvous and dock with another spacecraft, since this is what astronauts would have to do in orbit around the moon. Not only did the Gemini program succeed in reaching all of these goals, it did so very quickly. Ten manned Gemini missions launched in just 20 months, the fastest pace NASA has ever maintained on a program. And of course, it saw a lot of firsts. Gemini 4 saw NASA's first spacewalk, Gemini 5 saw the first use of long-duration fuel cells, Gemini 6 and 7 became the first two spacecraft to rendezvous and fly just within feet of each other in orbit, Gemini 8 became the first to do a successful rendezvous and docking with a target vehicle in orbit, Gemini 8 also became NASA's first near disaster in space, when one of the thrusters on the Gemini spacecraft was stuck open and it began rolling and tumbling in orbit. Astronauts Neil Armstrong and Dave Scott managed to get home safely, saving their own lives and, in all likelihood, the program. Gemini 11 hit a distance record, reaching 850 miles above the planet, the furthest any two humans had gone to that point. And by the time NASA launched the final mission, Gemini 12, at the end of 1966, it managed to bring all of these accomplishments together in one mission, except for the high-flying record. That one remained Gemini 11's for the time being. The Gemini program story is phenomenal, and it's detailed in a very interesting way in a new book called Space Shots and Snapshots of Project Mercury and Gemini, a rare photographic history. The book comes from John Bisney and JL Pickering, and though I don't actually have my own copy yet, it's still in the mail, I have been following JL Pickering as retro space images for years on Facebook, and the stuff he finds are absolutely phenomenal. Tons of unseen images, or if they are seen, they are only seen by the diehard space nerds. This is definitely a book to check out, and definitely a phenomenal way to commemorate a program that way too many people forget about. I've put together a gallery of images from the book over on my blog, Vintage Space at Popular Science, so definitely check that out, the link is below, for a bit of a preview of the book in case you're thinking of buying it. And one more note on the Gemini program is the question of pronunciation of Gemini versus Gemini. This is one of the most frequently asked questions I get on the entire program, which seems a little nuts. I think technically both are correct, but in old NASA footage and reports from the 1960s, it's pronounced Gemini, and that's where I've landed on it. Within one second of the scheduled time, Gemini number one lifted smoothly off the pad. So what do you guys prefer, Gemini or Gemini? And regardless of how you pronounce the name, what is your favorite moment of the Gemini program? Let me know in the comments below, and of course leave any questions and ideas for future episodes in the comment section as well. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter for daily vintage space content, and with new episodes going up right here every single Tuesday and Friday, subscribe so you never miss an episode.